wow, I could, I can do that. I didn't know I could do that, you know, which sometimes all you really need is like some incredible dancers and an idea and you can really make something magical. Hey, you're listening to On Composition, a dancefilmmaking.com podcast at the intersection of dance making and film composition. In today's episode, we're pushing boundaries with director, choreographer, and animator Nina McNeely on her iconic film John L. for the band Black Midi, made in collaboration with Entity Contemporary Dance Company. Nina, thank you so much for being here. I'm such a big fan of your work. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. When I saw that we got John L. onto dancefilmmaking.com, I like immediately emailed the team and was like, can we do an episode? It's like nothing I've ever seen before. This film is so crazy um, in the best way possible. And I know you wrote a little backstory blurb on it for the site, but I'm just wondering if you can talk us through the timeline after the band came to you about the project. Yeah, so the band contacted me about um, possibly directing a music video for them. So they sent me the track. And when I first heard it, I was kind of struck because, I mean, there's really no rock music anymore in the world. I mean, it's very slim. And I hadn't heard something like that that also reminded me of, like, all of the rock that I really loved in the 90s, like Primus and Alice in Chains and Pearl Jam and um, Tool and all of those kind of darker uh rock bands um and nirvana of course um but i i felt kind of like their music was like if talking heads and primus had a baby which i was really really into because he has this like announcer like vocal performance in it that's really interesting um so it was a little overwhelming because the song is a lot you know Mm -hmm. a lot of different time signatures Um, it's really fast and so I decided to like go on a hike and just listen to it and like whatever came to me I was just gonna grab at you know kind of really tried to like do like a brain vomit free think kind of approach so I went on a hike I was listening to it and kind of chuckling to myself and I kept thinking for some reason it kept popping in my head this character from the Domino's Pizzas commercials from the 90s called The Noid, which was like this weird guy in a bunny suit that was red and tight. And he walked really fast and he made your pizza late. So the whole like campaign was called Avoid the Noid. It was really strange, but it was in that same era that there was lots of like claymation and Mm. um, and dark feeling claymation in a lot of music videos and commercials and I really felt like I haven't seen or felt anything like that in a long time. And I was like, I don't know why that little guy keeps popping in my mind, but I'm going to like go with it. So um, then I, you know, started thinking of an idea. I think I wrote kind of more a slightly vague treatment to start and then started discussing with the band the idea. Um, And one fun thing that we did that I've actually never done since either and hadn't done before was like I built this world where these dancers were in and then I wanted to write like a whole you know backstory on how they came to be in this place and what their story was so I wrote you know this opening page on the treatment and then the band and I decided that we were going to like keep that backstory between us which was really fun too because if you know I the song kind of starts out of nowhere and it almost like from zero to 60 so I wanted the video to feel like that so it was good for us to have like a backstory to pull from Mm -hmm. um so yeah uh I was really surprised when they wanted to go finally like wanted to go with my idea (laughs) because I was like this is so weird like they're not gonna go for it (laughs) um but they did and I was stoked so um yeah I I knew that if I created like a dance that was strong enough to like be on stage and live on its own then that could make for a great video Mm -hmm. because the budget was pretty low but um I knew that if it had that and then I built the worlds in like in uh 
built all the compositions and an animation program for all of the backgrounds, I could make something really special. So yeah. Cool. Um, if you don't mind me asking, what animation program did you use? Uh, I use After Effects. I don't know how to do like 3D. So I'm pretty limited to doing more like 2D animation. But, you know, over the years of doing it, I feel like I've kind of developed a little bit of my own style in that way. And it's also something that I'm really aesthetically drawn to more than 3D because it's imperfect and a little scrappier and I feel like has a little more charm because we're not trying to convince you that it's real yeah I feel like your style and voice comes through pretty clearly and um I think it's amazing that you have that skill at that level with the amount of like choreography and directing that you're also doing super cool to see everything come together it's so obvious in the film like how much fun the dancers are having in every scene um, I want to know what like what the vibe was like <laughs> when you were making the choreography in the studio um, and like how much planning goes into all of those tracks before you can like combine it into a world that also matches your vision. One of the biggest challenges was like figuring out how I was going to multiply them and use that to make it feel like this giant, like old Hollywood Busby Berkeley production, you know, mm -hmm. um, which has all, always been like a big inspiration of mine when there's like, you know, hundreds of dancers mm -hmm. and there's just no way even in like big budgets that you're going to get that these days, those yeah. days are gone. Um, so, <laughs> so I was excited though, to see like, you know, how could I make these giant compositions using only my seven dancers, but, you know, multiplying them in a way that would make it really convincing and not, you know, you see a lot of like multiplication in other videos where it's clearly all the same mm -hmm. shot, you know? Mm -hmm. So I was like, if we switch out their costumes, like just their headpieces and their accessories, then they'll totally feel different. And also if I encourage them to like, do the choreography a little differently like with different personality that would help too and then I also did lots of things like you know you just march across the room and I'll add you in the background like marching mm -hmm. over this bridge or something like that um and also I did like do this section on a diagonal line and now switch out your costumes and do it again with a little different vibe and then I'd flip that so I could like make a giant V of a bunch of people so uh, but the vibes in rehearsal were hilarious and so fun because I knew I mean I was really inspired by uh, Rich Man's Fruit the Bob Fosse piece in Sweet Charity I just love like the personality of it um, and I wanted that but I also wanted like a touch of like a crazed Liza Minnelli <laughs> feeling just I've always just been in love with that like hyper Broadway like personality so um we really leaned into that we were, we were laughing the whole time in rehearsal like trying all of these different things especially uh, Raymond's such a character and he could really take on that Liza like as soon as I said it, it was like, boom <laughs> you know it was there so that was really fun um and what was really nice is like working with a dance company that already know each other, that already, you know, work together a lot. Um, I knew that I could get just that little bit of extra that would be a lot harder with like, you know, more commercial dancers or dancers that haven't worked together before. Um, so they had like just a synchronicity and um, a work ethic together that was really awesome. And I also like, it was some hard dancing without any breaks, you know? So in rehearsal, I'd be like, you know, you guys need a break or need some water, like take a moment. And they were like, no, let's do it again. And I was like, oh my God, this is my dream come true. <laughs> you know? So that really allowed me to like really craft it. I think we had, I was like, I'm going to put a lot of this budget into just rehearsing. So I think we had like four rehearsals and then the shoot day was just, you know, on a green screen. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so. Then once you have all these shots on the green screen, like how do you organize them in your brain? I mean, I really did organize it all before. So okay. there was a lot, like an insane amount of prep that went okay. into it, which 
I do for kind of everything that I do because being prepared like really allows me to, you know, create what I really want. You know, mm -hmm. I try to leave a little bit of room um, for like play and creativity on the day. Um, and in rehearsal, I leave a little bit of room too, but I knew that I, I really needed to for this being such like a complicated song and a crazy ass idea. I knew that I really needed to prepare it to like the ultimate level. So um, I, yeah, I just do it all on paper, you know, and I had an assistant, uh, Allison Mihe with me, that was uh, really helpful with getting all of that nailed down. So it kind of like my notes kind of look like football plays <laughs> at first with all of the formations and all of the things. But yeah, I really visualized as much as I could before so that the post process was a little smoother because also the turnaround was like insanely fast. I think I had a week, a, a week, week. And, a week and a couple days or something. It was really oh. crazy. So kind of it was a little crazy. I kind of didn't sleep very much. And I didn't have enough time to like send all the renders to like a rendering farm or anything. So I was just doing all of it on my little laptop <laughs> and every like scene would take like eight or nine hours to render. <laughs> it was crazy. I feel like that's at least an excuse for you to set the render and like walk away and close your eyes before they start to just like glaze over. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it was really, it was really hard because then I would wake up with like my fingers crossed that like everything exported correctly. And then sometimes I'd watch something and be like, no, <laughs> You know, this person's um, arms cut off by this mask and I have to do the whole thing over again. Yeah, it was intense. But I mean, I was really proud that I was able to like pull it off and really yeah. excited, you know, also yeah. really excited to like work with such like an innovative and like visionary band because I hadn't really heard or seen anything like them in so long. So I was really excited and like jumped on the opportunity as soon as I heard the song. Yeah, I do want to ask what the costume slash like accessory vision was like and I know you collaborated with a stylist on this yeah I worked with excess studios um and that was really great because like the I knew I wanted these like red unitards as a base that were like the Noid character from the Domino's thing but then I wanted to do like the very uh sweet charity Fosse accessories which in my research, I learned that at that time, Fosse was like really obsessed with uh, Federico Fellini, who's also one of my favorite directors, who definitely is like, was like the master of this like high fashion Italian, like that is where a lot of those looks come from in Sweet Charity. They're very, you know, of that era. Maybe it's the 70s, like Italian um you know with all of the like feathered wigs and the pearls and all of those different details so I knew that could be kind of an interesting way to like make them all look the same but also give them each like a unique style and also to just really stylize it on a small budget you know mm -hmm. yeah yeah that and then it kind of magically made it easy to like make them look like there were so many more characters by just switching out accessories really quick before we did another take. Because a lot of people, you know, in the comments and stuff on YouTube said that like it took them like a minute, a minute and a half to realize that it was all the same dancers just multiplied. Wow. Cool. Yeah. That's got to feel so good though. Yeah. Yeah, like, definitely. We worked hard for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I worked really hard for that and was like, ah, oh, it's probably you know, going to be pretty obvious, but that did really help. And I think in the chaos of all of it, you know, you're just trying to like absorb it when you first watch it. Mm -hmm. It takes a minute to like realize it. When you're building the steps for these characters and like the phrase work, I'm curious with all these influences, um, how you make it your own and um, yeah what you ended up with yeah I mean the more that I choreograph the more I realize like the power of repetition and like simplicity and kind of narrowing down your ideas to having like repeating themes and like that really helps um, 
And I feel like when I was a younger choreographer, I would try and put like all of my ideas into one. So because this already was like a really chaotic song and visual um, in rehearsal, it was fun to see how just like these little up and down moves, like every other person go down or up, like simple things looked mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> looked like so awesome, good, yeah. you know? And I definitely like, pulled some, you know, uh, energy and moves from like Fosse, but, uh, you know, I made it my own by like putting kind of just a rowdier kind of angle on it and making it like a little more modern. And I also feel like there's a lot of acting in it too, you know, like there's moments where they're not dancing, where they're all like afraid of the obelisk when it's going to break and stuff. And like that stuff was so fun and all of their you know, reactions were hilarious and stuff. So I think breaking it up too, so it's not just all dance, really helped me like build, you know, the arc of it to have, you know, it's a little bit of storyline that it does that confuses everybody <laughs> with the baby inside. Mm -hmm. Also, like, I'm not exactly sure what that means either, but I like it. Yeah, it's great. And that's I all think, that matters. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you have to understand art. Yeah, that's a yeah. personal. <laughs> totally, totally. That's amazing. Um, yeah, I think there's just really something about, like you said, the the repetition and the simplicity. Like there are moves in there that are like, even to the non dancer eye, right? Like really legible. Like oh, I know that step. Like the Charleston moments and the, like there's such a like fun playfulness like putting that in a new energy and people are really able to read the connotation of it and appreciate it differently which I think is amazing yeah. and there was like there's one part of the song that I was you know it goes into this like free jazz break but there's no way to count it like there's <laughs> no, no. no way you know yeah. and I wasn't even gonna try so I was like maybe it's like when they're all kind of going around in the lights there's that part it's like I think if we get at least like four in that are synchronized and then everyone just starts going on their own timing like that'll look pretty cool like with that part of the music that you know is just so free and chaotic and it looked great so sometimes things like that where it's like you know, try and get four synchronized and then everyone do it on your own timing can also look awesome and look really complicated without you having to actually map it out, you know? Yeah. I can't imagine what the map of like trying to count this music looks like. <laughs> yeah. I mean, sometimes it just makes it more complicated actually. And it's all about just dancers learning the music through listening to it instead of trying to break it down with counts and sometimes I do feel like counts kind of dilute the energy of the dynamics of the music because there's not really a way to like count the dynamics of the music you know something has like a fast to slow kind of sound effect you can't really count that and when you do it makes it dull a little bit you mm -hmm. know so mm -hmm. sometimes and I'm sure every every dancer knows you just use sound effects. <laughs> yeah, you know? we love our sound effects. Yeah, the sound effects are sometimes much more effective than the counts. <laughs> <laughs> totally. I always make this joke that I'm like, I can only count to eight. So yeah. <laughs> if you're trying to give me other numbers. Like, yeah, no, no. Don't even try it. <laughs> um, what did you learn from making this? I mean, one thing I for sure learned is like, that I feel like I really surprised myself in like pulling it off and was kind of like, wow, I could, I can do that. I didn't know I could do that, you know, which was really exciting, you know? Um, and because it happened so fast, like I learned that if I just really trust my instincts and like believe that I can accomplish something, like I can do it with enough like hard work and discipline. It did take a lot of that. But um, yeah, I think it also opened my eyes to like, sometimes all you really need is like some incredible dancers and an idea and you can really make something magical, even with a small budget. Yeah. I would actually say like big budgets scare me a little bit because I'm so used to having to like, you know, from all of the years of like making my own work, yeah. I'm so used to like that oh we could you know 
solve this problem with this easy thing that we can like buy these unitards on Amazon or something, you know, that sometimes when there's a lot, a lot of money and a lot of time, I mean, I've definitely gotten better over at that over the years. Um, that, yeah, I just have to like do different steps. And when you get really good at trusting your instincts and moving fast and being scrappy, you know, it kind of makes it harder when you have time and resources. Yeah, I definitely learned to like trust my instincts that dancers are like the most magical people in the world. You know, the best storytellers, they're like, you know, they can really create a story and create like an energy wave that can tell a story. And yeah, I would say those are basically those things. And like, it's great to have, and it's great to trust your dancers. And when you give them that trust, they really take it to the next level. Totally. Yeah. I think scrappy is a great word to describe it. Like dancers really can make something out of nothing. Um, which is, I think it's insane to me to learn that you had a low budget for this project because there is so much and it never feels like it's missing anything or like, oh, I wish that could be higher quality. Like it feels like it knows where it lives and it is exactly what it wanted to be. And that's just incredibly impressive to me. Thanks. <laughs>